services uh, public or, or sold out for lots of money. So they had been there, they had done that, and they gave us that mentorship and advice. With their help, we were able to build version 2, and that's when we put the mapping interface on it. Um, and then right now, where we are in the startup is trying to figure out how to make money. Um, how do we go from this, you know, our 450 users that we have today into scale it into thousands of users? So that's kind of the, the evolution of our startup. Build something small, raise a little bit of money, um, you know, get version one out there. A lot of other startups will go right in here, um, venture capital. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but right in here is where, you know, a lot of these guys raise VC investment, um, and then they go make a lot of money. Any questions about, I know I went through that fast, but lean startup methodology, that kind of thing? No, we're good? Okay. Okay, so the four things, that, that's my story. Four things that you can do today while you're still in college. This is the number one most important thing. If you don't remember anything else that I say, remember this one thing, it's this important. Today, right now, and I didn't do this, that's, I guess that's why I'm gonna stress it so much. My startup would be so much farther along if I had done this, like starting when I was in college. And that is, build your network. Do, do like exactly what you're doing in here. Come to meetings, meet people in person. Um, I use a lot of social media tools. It's insanely easy to build a network um, using social media tools like Twitter and blogging. So, um, you, you guys, you have your classes, you have your job, you have all this going on, and here I'm you know, putting something else, putting another priority on your plate and telling you it's really important. My suggestion to you is take the content that you're already writing for your classes and repurpose it into content that you can put online, right? So, for example, let's say your professor gives you an assignment and you don't think it's all that interesting or exciting. Um, nine times out of ten, if you go to that professor and say, hey, I'm really interested in, I don't know, mapping threatened and endangered species mapping salamanders in the area, or I want to map how the music scene in Austin changes and what artists move through, you know, what clubs. If you come to the professor with an idea that you're excited about and you want to work on, they'll let you do that. And then you can take that content and repurpose it into very quick blog posts um, and then you can communicate it with it about it on Twitter. So in my world, I have all my different social networks linked up. That way when I write a blog post, it goes out on Twitter, it goes out on Facebook, it goes out on LinkedIn, um, and I'm able to spend a very small amount of my time writing content, which is helping me build my network, right? People are opting in to hear what I have to say and to hear what I have to think. And those same people, later on down the line, when you have your business idea, you have your concept, those will be the audience that can give you feedback, they can tell you if your idea is a bad idea or a good idea, and they will also be your customers. Does that make sense? Is that doable? Is that, is that crazy to think you could add on another responsibility or activity in your everyday lives that are as busy as they already are? No? No, probably not. Yeah, no, probably not. That's okay. That's all right. Oh, yes, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't so the challenge is try not to think of it as adding on to anything else, right? Because I know you're busy. What can you already, you're already doing it, right? You're walking in between classes. Can you send out a tweet, something interesting that you learned? Um, you're reading, you're consuming things online already. How can you repurpose that into to putting out interesting content so people want to opt in and listen to what you're talking about and follow you? Is that, is that okay? Okay. Um, take an intro to programming class. You don't have to be an amazing developer to do a startup these days. I took an intro to programming class in high school. I learned just enough visual basics so that when I got into the economics world, I could write minor scripts. I learned just enough of visual basic that I could then start developing databases. And I learned just enough about databasing, doing databases that I can do my startup. So you don't have to have a degree in programming to do development work. Um, my co-founder, who is our developer, um, he is our coder, his degree is in archeology. span so you, you just learn a little bit at a time, but right now while you're in college, just go ahead and take that intro to programming class. Um, you'll get the basics and that's all you need. That way if you decide in the future you want to do some development work, you want to build something online, you'll have the background um, that you can then uh, build on. Does that, does that make sense? Have you guys taken programming? Any programming classes so far? No. no. You have? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, it's computer science. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Fun or not? Not so fun. Not really. Not so fun. <laughs> right. It does. It does. I think, at least for me, programming classes are kind of boring, but building something that people actually want to use—that's pretty exciting. So, anybody else take an intro to programming class or more than that? I, well, I really encourage you to do that. Okay, the third thing you can do in your world is look for problems. Um, maybe make a commitment. Every week, I'm going to find one problem that's out there and brainstorm ways that you can solve that problem. Right? Just what's a problem in your world? Um, in my world, right, when, when we started Qubit, it was it takes me 40 hours a week to grab data when it should take me 30 seconds. The technology is already out there. I don't need to invent new technology. Um, I just need to take the existing technology and create a business and create a startup around it. That's how you know we um, created Qubit. Um, that said, my co-founder and I had a list of about 10 different ideas. So before we started Qubit, we went through all 10 of these ideas and said, which of these 10 ideas do we think is going to be the you know is going to make us the most money? Um, is going to be the best business idea? And the Qubit concept, pulling data, um, was the best idea that we had. So as you're just every day kind of just getting the mentality of this is a problem and don't not only recognize that it's a problem how can I create a solution to that problem how can I solve that problem just make that a make that a mentality thing and if you want you can blog about it you can tweet about it because then people can give you feedback and it's like no that's not a problem for me here's how I solve it or they can tell you yeah this is a great you know this is a huge problem and so if you have this network of people that's giving you feedback when you're putting problems out there it's going to help you identify um, you know, what are the potential business opportunities? Does that make sense? Okay, and the fourth thing, um, one awesome thing about, about being here in Central Texas is there's an awesome startup scene. Um, people here, they support startups, they love startups, they want people to start their own businesses. Because um, a lot of times you do feel like um, you're you're wrestling with the sumo wrestler, right? Like your little head and the big businesses are the sumo wrestlers. That's that's part of life. Um, so there's great groups in Austin that if you want to start talking to folks, um, so for example, there's Refresh Austin, uh, there's a WordPress meetup, there's Lean Startup meetup, um, there's all kinds of people that will fund your business. There's Tech Ranch, there's Capital Factory. There's amazing resources out there. Um, but more than just the resources, you'll get plugged into a group of people who think about life a little bit differently, right? They're thinking about problems. They're thinking about how do I spread the word. Um, and doing a startup is a skill set, just like doing geography and building maps is a skill set. Making money in a startup is a skill set. So the more you just talk to these people, ask them what they're reading. They don't read CNN. They get their news from another source. What are they reading? What books are they reading? What you know? What startup theories are they talking about right now? Um, get, consider plugging into the startup scene. Maybe you can't make it to the meetings, but maybe you can read Hacker News, um, or maybe you can follow Eric Ries on Twitter. Um, so there's some there's some definitely thought leaders in the startup world that you can start just kind of exposing yourself to their ideas. Can you go through those ones? You have Refresh Austin or Wordpress? So Refresh Austin is a great one. Um, that's a design group here in Austin. Uh, the WordPress meetup is an excellent meetup for entry level um, how to build a website. Uh, Lean, the Lean Startup meetup. This is this is probably the true um, like startup group. If you want to learn startup methodology, like how do I build that minimum viable product? And then what do I do next? And then what do I do next? Uh, the Lean Startup Meetup is an excellent group for that. Um, those are all online type things? So those are in-person. Those are in-person meetups that you can go to, in-person groups and events. So the online online groups, um, I would say, is Hacker News. Um, Google Hacker News, because it's like news at Y Combinator or something like that. Um, if you, if you read Hacker News, you'll see enough of the names. It, it's like a CNN for, it's kind of, it's, it's more like a Reddit or a Dig for hackers. Um, and by hackers, I mean programmers, not like illegal hackers. Um, so, yeah.